Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, the Nissan Z or Nissan Z is finally back in North America after many decades of missing in this industry. And I'm absolutely excited about this because I remember growing up in Japan loving and being inspired by the Nissan Z. I also have a friend who works for Nissan and he was part of the Nissan Z's engine development some years ago. So I have a fond memories of talking to him about the Z as well. In any case, there are lots of things to talk about in Nissan Z. In fact, as an engineer, I'm going to point out 17 things about the all new Nissan Z that perhaps you didn't know about. So let's get right into the details. Let's go. Welcome back. So there are many surprises about the new Nissan Z or Z, depending on where you live. As you know, I grew up in Japan. I live in Canada right now. So I'm gonna keep on using the word Z instead of Z if you don't mind. But the biggest surprise and the first surprise is the fact that we even have the Z in our marketplace. I think it was going to be killed off at some time ago because of the declining sales for things like sports cars these days. But I'm so glad that Nissan kept the Z and actually transformed it something absolutely unique and beautiful. I really like the design and it really reflects everything what the Z stands for. The second surprise I want to mention to you is the fact that I have a long history with, uh, with a Z or Z because I grew up in Japan admiring and absolutely loving all the different iterations and generations of the Z. But the reason why I have a special attachment these days is because one of my best friends in Japan in the business is Mr. Takumi Kurosawa, or Takumi-san we call him, who is the father of the Nissan GTR engine. He is the former production leader for the GTR engine. And guess what? His first love in terms of car is the Z because he was in charge of the engine for some of the original Z. And therefore, I spend a lot of time talking to him about Nissan engines and their production philosophy and so forth. So I have a deep appreciation for anything to do with a Z as a result of Takumi-san. He actually overhauled and remodeled his, um, his version of the Nissan Z, and I'm going to be driving it hopefully when I'm in Japan again this fall. So that's the second surprise. The third surprise is something you might already know if you watch some of the previous videos about the Z, but uh, some of the unique design philosophy include this line right here, which is supposed to look like a Japanese katana, uh, that's like a sword, if you want to call it that way, uh, that runs from the front all the way to the back. It gives you that distinct line and a feel, but it's also shaped, if you look, watch carefully, like a Japanese katana. So I think that's a really unique aspect of the, uh, the Z right here, uh, along with many other Easter eggs that uh, perhaps some of the other previous videos have talked about. The fourth thing I want to point out is that the all new Z is actually not all new. In fact, it carries over many of the components from past, including the powertrain and some of the chassis design as well. But of course, the design outside is all new, the interior is all new. So it's a more of a kind of midway between a facelift and an all new model design in terms of engineer perspective, kind of halfway. It's something that perhaps you didn't know. The fifth surprise is about the engine, 400 horsepower, twin turbo V6 engine that is absolutely a gem to drive. However, if I compare this to, let's say, the new Toyota Supra, which I just drove a few weeks ago, I will admit that this one is not quite as refined and as smooth as the GR Supra's inline six engine. I think maybe it's carrying over some of the Z feel from the past, so it does have a kind of that raw feel, which I think many of us do like. Uh, but if you're looking for the ultimate smoothness and refinement, not quite as smooth in terms of the engine for the Z compared to the GR Supra. But if you're looking for something that has a similar feel to the previous Z, you're going to love this engine because it's got lots of power and lots of torque, and there's no shortage of a turbo boost. When you step on the gas, the thing just takes off. The sixth point I want to make is also combined with a question for you, and that is, in terms of design, which version of the Nissan Z does this look like? Does it look like an old version? Does it look like a, a new model or what is it? Well, interesting thing is that it's a mixture of the previous model Z. So the front one looks more like the original Nissan Z in terms of shape, that's what they told us in terms of the design aspect. But in the back, no, it's not from the original Z, but it's some of the subsequent Z had a very similar um, back end right here. Do you know exactly which version that is? I'm kind of curious to know. If you can guess it, let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure if you remember this, but I did own a GR Supra a 2021 for about two years. So I got to really enjoy driving that car, but had a number of complaints with the GR Supra. One of them was that uh, this roof line is way too low and I have a hard time getting out. Even though I'm not really tall, 
I keep hitting my head on that one. But on the Z right here, you have a really good opening and a very good entry and exit. So that is my seventh surprise I want to point out to you. In terms of how you're getting and how you get out on this vehicle, it's way better than the GR Supra. The A surprise and the point I want to make is the rear cargo area. Obviously, no one will buy this car for practical reasons, but uh, if you notice here, I got a bunch of stuff here for filming. And even though we have a actually pretty good uh, width right here, it narrows over here because the suspension and then there's a little bit of space over there. Uh, more importantly, this thing is pretty shallow between here and the actual hatchback here. So it's not a very practical space compared to let's say the Supra, which had a quite a deep uh, trunk capacity and it was quite a usable space. I can actually put a suitcase in there. So even though this is a bit wider, I think the space is not as usable. Uh, but having said that, it's better than some other sports car I've seen. So that's the eighth point I wanted to make. The ninth point is an important one and that is the Z is still produced in Japan in the Tochigi factory of Nissan, which is a little bit away from uh, Tokyo area and quite a bit away from the Yokohama factory where I have been many times. So it is still built in Japan, which is a bit different compared to uh, GR Supra, which is obviously built in collaboration with BMW. So that is built in Austria in Europe by a Canadian automotive engineering company called Magna. So that's built in Europe. This one is still built in Japan. The 10th surprise about the Nissan Z is how good the quality of the body is. As you know, I measure the gaps using my little tool here. In the case of uh, this Z or Z, is shockingly good. It's only 2.8 millimeter here, 2.9 millimeter in terms of gap, and it's also perfectly flush against each other. And the uh, door to fender is 3.2 and 3.1, and that's it. I'm not measuring the back because my trunk is open right now. But uh, the quality of the body panel and the body fit and alignment is surprisingly good for uh, what is basically a very affordable sports car. It's better than many of the sports cars from Europe costing three or four times as much. This is a near perfect body fit and finish and panel alignment for the new Z. The 11th thing I want to point out is the paint thickness, which is one way to uh, understand the quality of the paint overall. Uh, obviously, thicker the paint, the more durable it is over a longer period of time. So you want the paint thickness to be between 100 to 150 microns. Some cars are a little bit thicker, some cars are a little bit thinner. Let's take a look on this Nissan Z. It's 116 on the hood, so not too bad. A, a bit thinner than I would like to see because I like to see over 120, but it's pretty well average for Japanese cars. Let's take a look at the front fender. 109 and the front door area. 105 and rear fender, 119. So it's pretty well in line with most Japanese cars, especially Toyotas. They tend to be between 100 to 120 microns. So thickness of paint is about an average, maybe a little bit thinner than what I like to see. Uh, but this yellow paint is beautiful, I have to admit. And the paint quality from front to back in terms of reflection and so forth, absolutely perfect. The 12th thing I wanted to point out is the selection of the tires. Obviously, uh, Nissan will probably have a couple of different brand of tires that they use for the Z. But this one came with the uh, Bridgestone Potenza, which in the, back in the days when we were growing up in Japan, we all loved Bridgestone tires, where that was a dominant tire. But in the last several years, most of the sports car brand have gone with Michelin or Pirelli, or sometimes Continental tires. So I'm a bit surprised to find Bridgestone tire uh, and the Potenza brand still in this Nissan Z, but nevertheless, the tires are very good because it reflects in terms of handling, in a sense that this thing really sticks to the ground when I make some twisty corners. So obviously these tires are doing the job. The third thing thing is a minor one, but it's always been my pet peeve with some brands because I really liked the fact that in most of the brands these days, you just touch the door handle to unlock and to open away, and then you touch part of the door handle to lock again. But in the case of a Nissan Z, and some other Nissan as well, you have to push the button to lock and you have to push the button again to unlock. So uh, if I'm just uh, walking around with a groceries in my hand, I just want to be able to grab the handle and open it. So I would say even though it's a minor thing, I prefer to just be able to touch the door handle and unlock it versus the fact that I have to pick and choose the button to press. Okay, so now I'm inside the uh, Z and the 14th thing I'm going to talk about is the powertrain and also the handling and the ride. So in terms of the engine, as I mentioned earlier, it has a very different feel, let's say from a GR Supra, which has a very refined and quiet and smooth feel. That car is more like a, a GT sports coupe than a sports car. 
This one has a bit of more of a raw feel, a little bit rougher in terms of the engine character. So um, it does remind you a lot more of a traditional sports car, especially something like a Z from the past. So uh, if you like uh, um, a real sports car feel and something closer to what the Z used to stand for, you're going to really like the engine. It's got lots of power and torque. And when you step on it, it takes off like there is no tomorrow. And I'll see if I can step on it a little bit here on the road. So you can tell that it has plenty of power and torque. Uh, having said that, the turbo boost comes a little bit later. I, it could be part of the design process. Maybe they wanted to, us to feel the oomph when you step on the gas. But I will admit that the delivery of the turbo boost is not quite as smooth as I want to see. So as you step on the gas, it kind of take off suddenly. And so yes, lots of power, lots of torque. It had a really good traditional Z feel, if you, want, if you know what I mean. But at the same time, the turbo kick in, it's a bit abrupt. So that's my 14th point. So now that takes me to the 15th point, which is about the handling. And right now I'm driving in this twisty road right here. So you can tell that the car stays really flat, very agile, extremely, extremely fun to drive in terms of a basic handling maneuvers. And even when I took this through a more of a twisty road, which isn't the case right now, it handled it like a champ. So very flat and very agile around corners, uh, and it's very quick. You can tell when I do left and right like this, the car just feels like it's on the rail. So if you love the original Z feel, which is kind of going back to the basics with a, a driving character, with a very raw feel for the engine, and a superbly calibrated steering that give you quick feedback, then you're going to really enjoy the new Z. Uh, now, I will also say that in terms of the feedback from the road to the steering into my hands, th this is definitely better than the GR Supra, which feels a little bit numb from my perspective. And that's often the case with BMW models, so they probably couldn't do very much about that. But this Z has a lot more feedback. Uh, it has a better weight in terms of steering feel. And once again, it feels more like a sports car than a GT car compared to GR Supra. So while I'm driving, I'm going to get into my 16th point, which is a six speed close ratio manual transmission with a rev matching as well. And it has just a good feel for me, I think compared to the GR Supra, which has a little bit of a lighter feel. This one, once again, has a bit of a heavier feel, uh, closer to what the Z used to feel before, prior to this particular Z. And so it's got a good notch. It has a good feel to it when I shift. It's also quick shifting, and I also like the fact that I don't have to depress the clutch too far into the floor to change gears. That is one issue with a GR Supra for someone like me who's not very tall, and I don't have a long leg. So I found the um, GR Supra, along with many other German models, have a too long of a clutch travel, and I'm finding it a little bit awkward in terms of trying to set up the uh, actual seat layout. But in the case of a Z, I think it's kind of designed for maybe Japanese market or Asian market and therefore the ratio of the clutch travel, the brake, and then also uh, how I reach the um, manual transmission shifter, all perfect. It just fits me like a glove. So I really like the way the clutch feels and the way transmission shift. And that's my 16th surprise, especially compared to Supra, which I found the uh, clutch to be a little bit too long of a travel. The 17th and my final point I want to make is that this thing is a good value. I'll put the prices of the base models in the US and Canadian dollars in the screen right here. But the new Z offers a lot of performance and features for the money. I can't believe that you can still buy a sports car at this price range and give you almost everything that a much more expensive car will give you. So for example, I was driving a Porsche recently and while they're a beautiful car to drive and maybe nothing else comes close to it, it also costs two to three times as much as this one here. And I cannot really say that it's three times better. So I think overall, the Z offers tremendous value if you look at all the features that it offers, as well as the power and the torque it has, and this kind of pure sports car feel that is lacking in let's say GR Supra. I will say that for me personally, I would prefer the GR Supra as an everyday car because it's a bit more forgiving. It's a little bit smoother and a little bit more refined. But if I'm looking for a pure sports car to drive on Sundays, this one is a bit more fun to drive and has a better road feel compared to GR Supra. So what do you guys think of some of my comments on the new Nissan Z? I pointed out a whole bunch of things that are both good and maybe not so good about the Z. But regardless of that, 
you can't doubt the fact that this offers tremendous value for the money in terms of how much performance it offers. If you enjoy my video, I would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments, and if you haven't done so, would you kindly subscribe. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.